Hi, this is Ross. And this is Kara. This is DIY on the house. Today we are in our new greenhouse. And I wait, I need to correct, it's not the greenhouse. We have named this the Joyful Ho House. Uh, <laughs> H-O-E. H-O-E. The H-O-E It's, H -O -E it's, it's our H-O-E. <laughs> um, what it is, is it used to be a clubhouse for the kids, so we took all of the siding off of the clubhouse, reused the wood, and built a greenhouse. So we're not claiming to be experts yet on the greenhouse, although it is uh, doing really well. So I'm super yep. excited, super excited yeah, about that. Yeah, it's really super good. So this is not a video on how to grow. This is a video on the things we learned while building our yeah. greenhouse. Yep, and it was quite the learning curve. Uh, once we disassembled the whole uh, other clubhouse, um, we used the existing wood that we had, which is actually decking wood we got from a friend uh, that ripped down a uh, redwood deck and took all that lumber and uh, reused it and built this Ho House. Ho House. <laughs> I was going to say Taj Mahal. It's no. not really a Taj Mahal. This is more of a Ho House. Yeah. So um, we are just going to go step by step the things we yep. learned. And if you have any questions or suggestions, if you are a greenhouser and um, we are completely hungry for information, you can put comments down below. We'd really appreciate learning from you. Okay, before Ross gets going down our list of the things we learned, wanted to show you how we have set it up. Uh, we used a rain gutter, um, and it's it's working. We're using a rain gutter for the lettuce. Um, we have bought Dollar Tree uh, bowls and popped holes in the bottom of those, and we have our radish and carrots and stuff going in those. We're growing tomatoes, so we have um, racks hanging up in the middle, suspended from the ceiling uh, to tie the tomatoes to. So we have a couple uh, troughs of that. Uh, this trough was actually a bench uh, that we tore apart and rebuilt and repurposed. Uh, we have potatoes. Potatoes have popped through. I have sewed uh, some potato grow bags uh, and those are working. We have some more tomato seedlings. Uh, so. Like I said, we are far from experts on growing, but I cannot tell you enough how much fun this has been uh, to watch things actually grow in here. After we framed the, the greenhouse, we found out for, through research that painting prior to putting anything else up was key. Paint your uh, greenhouse white or a really light color to help the heat absorption and the light reflecting. We actually had to paint ours at night because we live in kind of a windy area and we were using a paint gun. Uh, so it was kind of fun doing a, a night painting party, but paint white before you put up your siding. And you do want to use an exterior paint. Um, because there is a lot of moisture going on here, we do have foggers going on as well to try to try to eliminate some of the heat. Um, so exterior paint is also a good idea. The polycarbonate we got from Home Depot, um, I know Lowe's sells it as well, I'm sure just about any place does. Um, the one big factor in it was to go with the frosted. Uh, a friend of ours, neighbor, uh, he's first time he built his greenhouse, he ended up using a, a clear polycarbonate and ended up just frying all of his plants. He was just sick. And so, so and because it's expensive. Um, so we went with the frosted and like you see, everything's doing great. Um, we have a slider door in the front that you'll see in the video as well that allows quite a bit of light in and uh, everything's growing fine. We didn't have to go with the clear and uh, we don't need it any hotter in here either. Uh, a lot of days it'll be 103 in here, 104, and we're trying to keep it cooler. So uh, going without the clear was key. The polycarbonate comes in 8, 10, and 12 foot lengths. Uh -huh. So when you are calculating your shed or your greenhouse or your hoe house, 
figure out the least amount of cuts. Our um, greenhouse is 10 foot by 12 foot, so we ran our um, sidewalls 12 foot, so there are no cuts on our north and south side, just straight 12 foot, and that way you are minimizing material and you're minimizing the number of cuts. Yeah, and, and the same thing on the roof. Uh, the roof ended up being six foot, uh, as far as the, uh, uh, from the top down to the side. So that helped out as well, just using a 12 foot sheet, cutting that in half. And uh, so it was all money savings and because and, it is quite expensive. So as far as cutting the polycarbonate, it's super simple. It's, it's just plastic. Um, but the thing you have to do, you have to buy a uh, fine tooth saw blade, uh, whether, you know, on your circular saw. So when, and it's more for a plywood blade. So what you do is you actually turn that blade backwards. So when you're cutting, the blade, the, the teeth are actually cycling backwards. And the reason for that is it doesn't catch, you're just kind of pushing it through and those blades are cutting the soft polycarbonate. Uh, if you did it the other way, it would probably catch on the polycarbonate and start chunking pieces off and you want a good clean cut. And that's what made a big factor in that. One of the biggest thing is the earmuffs. Um, I mean, it is super loud. I mean, it whines like a cat just got its tail yanked. Um, it's, it's seriously bad. I mean, Kara was probably always away and it's so super loud. It just, it's deafening. And I, safety glasses, always safety glasses because that's, uh, it was actually flaking off and you can feel the little particles uh, popping me on the skin. As far as on the ends, uh, where it's hitting a, a corner or on the roof where it comes down and hits the eave, you need to use uh, these end caps. Uh, these are uh, more of a wavy crown on these. Uh, the, the material we used was a square crown. Um, unfortunately, there was a little mix up at the store. They end up giving us, our first batch was square, and this stuff just fits beautifully into that. It's nice and tight. Um, they didn't have any more, so they sent these here. We re realized they were wrong, uh, but we went ahead and used them anyway. They work fine. Uh, it's not ideal, but it works. And it all, what it, these do is you put these on the ends. Any place is going to catch wind, and that'll actually stop that. And it uh, keeps everything nice and tight, so if you have a big windstorm, uh, kind of like we're having today, actually, and you can see it's super calm in here, um, it, it keeps the, the place airtight as far as wind. Um, we do want airflow, but we don't want things so like hurricane force winds ripping off the siding that we just put on. The ridge cap we used was just asphalt ridge cap. Um, it's a preformed uh, cap. It was six and a half feet long, and just we all we had to do is order two of those. So the reason we went with that was cost. Uh, it was cheap. It was the right length. We only need two pieces of it, and they sell it. So we thought, hey, you know what? If they sell it. Obviously, it, it's, it's a proof of product. One thing that we had to research, we were trying to calculate how much material. These sheets are 26 inches wide. When you overlap them with another sheet, they overlap enough to make it a full 48 inches from top to bottom. So when you're calculating uh, your stud walls or, or your height of your walls, they are overlapping to make them, two of them together would be 48. Now that the greenhouse is constructed, we need to make sure there was ventilation. So we put in a 12-inch Worley gig. Um, it's just a vent uh, that spins when the wind blows. Frame that in before we put the roofing on. Then you put the roofing on, and then you finally attach the Worley gig on top of that. And uh, so that, that was actually extremely simple. It took no time at all to put on. It's a great way to draw the heat out for side uh, ventilation. We uh, found a sliding glass door on Craigslist for $25, and we have a crank out window on the other side uh, so we get some good cross air, and the Whirly Gig helps the heat to rise. So the screws we used were, uh, we bought from Home Depot as well. Uh, they were suggested with these polycarbonate panels and I think they also work for metal as well. But so when you drive them in, um, uh, we didn't pre-drill. I, I know a lot of videos show you pre-drilling, that would be a major pain in the rear. Uh, so I just test drilled a couple of them and it didn't split the polycarbonate at all. 
they just they just ran right through. So we did that on the entire thing. And then when you sink the screw in, there's a little rubber gasket on it. You you bring the screw down until you see a little bit of a flex or mushrooming in the gasket and quit. Um, and that uh, is how you do it. And it's super simple. I mean, my daughter did it. <laughs> just joking. JK. <laughs> Actually, my daughter and my son, they ended up doing pretty much everything. Pretty uh, much everything. <laughs> I just cut and I uh, give them the pieces and they put all the screws and stuff in. So it's actually a piece of cake for us. The funnest part of the whole project for me was actually the solar fan. Um, Kara wanted to do, um, had, she wanted some ventilation out here. And so we thought, you know what, let's try solar. We don't have, we don't have power. We don't have power. Them. I could have ran it, but it had been expensive. Um, so uh, we thought, you know what, let's uh, get a solar panel off of Amazon and a, a radiator fan for a car. And that's what we did. So we ended up getting the solar panel. Uh, I mounted the, uh, the fan onto the Whirly gig, as you can see in the picture. Ran wire over to just a regular wall outlet switch for a house and then rema uh, ran the remainder wire over to the solar panel, I connected that up, put it in the sun, and oh my gosh, the thing <laughs> kicks butt. We have um, a, a thermometer, we have a, yeah. a what do you call it, wireless uh, thermostat. Yeah. Yep. So it's in, um, I have a, a receiver at my desk inside, so I can see through the day and uh, come out and turn on the fan and it drops the temperature. It does, it's crazy. The panel actually makes a difference where the sun is, uh, where the panel is, so kind of just, you know, if you do it, just put it in the right position and it's crazy, crazy cool. Side note, wire it for the wind. We live in a very windy yeah. area, so we do have it wired securely. Yeah. As far as cutting uh, holes around circles, for, like for the, uh, the whirly gig on the roof for the ventilation, um, I use the orbital cutter um, and I, that could be had anywhere from Home Depot to uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, but you can actually cut round circles and the polycarbonate was super easy to cut through. I mean, it's just plastic. So, and that's kind of a tool you'd like to have or, or you need some type of a small bladed uh, saw. Well, I think that that goes through our list of what we've learned. Yeah. Um, if there's any tips that you have, uh, please comment. Uh, we really have had fun with this. Uh, our greenhouse is full of uh, blooming idiots. That's my favorite pea spot. Pea spot, yeah. We have plenty of time. <laughs> yep. Uh, loud beets. We have loud, loud beets. beets. Uh, good deals. And awesome carrots. Wait. No. Good deals. No. No good cares. deals. Uh, oh, uh, what did I say loud beats? We have loud beats. Um, uh, but we have had a lot of fun with this. So well, it's a great place to keep your hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so thank you so much for watching DIY on yep. the House and uh, check back often for more videos. Mm -hmm.